Dolor și de ce fugea? De depte spica, de depte chief justice, the right honorable prime minister, the chairman of the, the vice chairman of the NRM, all the other leaders and the Wanainchi who are listening. In the State of the Nation address recently, I reminded you of the three historical missions of the African Revolution. I reminded you of the four ideological principles of the NRM and of how the Ugandan economy has not only grown from US dollars 1.5 billion in 1986 to now US dollars 55 billion by the exchange rate method, but also to US dollars 180 billion by the PPP method. I think the economists should get time and explain to you this difference between GDP by the exchange rate method, which is what we are, the minister was talking about here, and GDP by the PPP method, the purchasing power parity method. The exchange rate method shrinks our economy because we are still importing items from abroad unnecessarily. We are importing unnecessarily. If you look at the size of our GDP by the PPP method, it is now two times the size of the South African economy when Mzee Mandela took over the leadership of that country in 1994. Because at that time, the GDP of South Africa was about 80 billion, 89 billion or something. So if you use the PPP method, the GDP of Uganda now is two times the size of the South African economy by the time the Mandela took over government there. In the next few years, for me, I'm not waiting for the 2040, because they keep talking about the 2040. We shall catapult the economy to the size of the USD 500 billion. Why am I sure of this? It is because much of our economy today is comprised of raw materials that are in value nominally 10% of the value of the final products. By adding value to coffee, maize, forest products, minerals, etc., our, our economy will grow exponentially. You have seen the exports in this year, they grew by 38%. You saw the figures there, which the minister was showing you, e exports export earnings in one year from $4 billion to $7 billion. Rate of growth 38%. Because we are just underutilizing everything. This is the problem. Uganda importing furniture. You can imagine that? Importing furniture from Dubai, from India. Mama Janet here had to fight with the, those wonderful people in the Ministry of Education who were determined to buy furniture from India. Imagine furniture in Tebe also takes, talks, takes money outside. Money is taken to buy dead people's clothes from outside. M3 Juro. That's what the Banyangre call clothes of dead people. They are called M3 Juro. So that's what we, we, we spend $800 million on imported textiles. 
The shot I am putting on is made here. 100% Ugandan. This shot here. Why should we import textiles? We had some issues with the traders here. The people they call traders. What they call traders are the importers. How about there was a man called Warusi Mpanga in the 1950s. He was buying cattle from the Angkor area and bring them to Kampara. He was not an importer. He was an internal distributor. According to the traders in Kampala, that one is not a businessman. The businessman is the one who is Oksaka, who is buying from outside. This slave mentality must go away. I'm not a slave myself. I have never accepted a slave dependency mentality. That's how we were able to lead our revolution. So this importing is, is what is creating the discrepancy. The economy is bigger, $180 billion, but if you use the exchange rate method, it comes to $55 billion. It, is, it, it shrinks. But if you solve that, the, the, economy, the size in figures will be much bigger than it is now. We have the electricity and we should continue to the generation. I want to thank the minister. He, 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 he showed everything here in detail. And I'm glad you gave him a standing ovation. I think you may go to heaven because of of showing you gratitude. Entasime Korachi? Entasime Korachi? Ah. The, the one who does not thank, nobody will give him again. We have the electricity and we shall continue expanding the generation and the transmission. The private sector is the main engine of growth and transformation. We already have a well-educated population that is easy to skill and is also innovative, as you, as you saw the science, the, the knowledge economy. Those are our young people who, who are doing all those scientific uh, innovations. In order for the economy to grow, the only thing I can add on now, because I don't want to give a long speech, in order for the economy to grow even more, we need, we need to be competitive in the products we produce. And the minister conveyed my message very emphatically, uh, which I will repeat at the end of this short speech. But in order we need to be competitive in products and services we produce. Our products and services must be cheaper and of better quality than products from other countries. In order to achieve that, we need affordable electricity, which is already being worked on. Because for you to be competitive, you need cheap electricity. And we are working on that, as you saw here. We need low-cost money for the wealth creators, which is already available in the, in the forms of PDM, MIOGA, and UDB loans. I really want to render irrelevant these money lenders and all these people who suck our people. We shall, we shall continue putting money in the PDM, in a Mioga, in a UDB, so that the people want wealth creation, have soft money, money which is not very expensive.
labor so we have electricity is going to be cheaper money for for wealth creation will, will be cheaper labor is still not expensive however and those are the crucial factors when you are producing a good or a service the cost of electricity the cost of, of the money you borrow the labor cost the, the, the wages which are being paid the salaries which are being paid to the workers however to further handle the to render products and services correct this in my speech this should be uncompetitive we must reactivate rail and water transport for cargo this is what is missing now electricity is being worked on money for borrowing for, for production not for importing we are not giving you soft money for importing if you, have, if you want to import you go to the money lenders you go to the, these other fellows the, the commercial banks <coughs> but if you, you are a wealth creator we have money for you the cost of is still low but how about the cost of transport transport not for people who are going to nightclubs those can pay whatever cost they, they are charged it's up to them if you don't want to, to pay you, you stay home so when I say the cost of transport I'm talking about transport of goods cargo that's why the railway is, is, is our next big target railway for the goods and uh, especially for the goods even people but mainly for for cargo we must reactivate rail and water transport for cargo we have repaired the old meter gauge from Malaba to Kampala and also from Tororo to Guru Papuach we are going to start building the SGR, the standard gauge railway from Malaba to Kampala and Kampala to Mpongwe to Kasese. Later, we are going to expand the SGR, the standard gauge railway to, Nim to Gulu Nimule. The railway will transform our capacity to create wealth. Because if we, once the railway is fully operational, then transport of goods from here up to Mombasa will be cheap, cheaper. From here up to Dar es Salaam, from here up to South Sudan, from here up to Congo, it will be cheaper. It will also save the roads, because this uh, crowding you see on the road, it is because if, when the, rail, the railway starts taking off the trucks from the road, then the pipeline, because we are also making the pipeline for, for, for petroleum, because now the road has got passengers, they are on the road, you have the, the, the cargo on the road, you have the petroleum products on the road, that's why the road is in, under such pressure. The railway and the pipeline for the petroleum will solve that problem. That means only passengers or light, or light trucks will remain on the road. It will cause less pollution 
and consume less fuel because on the road you spend a lot of fuel stopping what because of the slow movement we are moving forward on the issue of introducing electric cars and electric border borders as you saw here so these are the two additional strategic interventions the railway and the pipeline for the petroleum products. Now, the other, strategic, the other strategic intervention we need to stabilize our economy forever is irrigation for agriculture. The minister talked a bit about it here, but we need to do more emphasis. Because you know we are lucky, we have we have rains, but sometimes the rains delay, or sometimes they, you have less rains. Then you get a crisis, lack of food. So in order to re remove that that uh, occasional disturbance. We must have supplementary agricultural arrangements. Much of the time we shall have the rains, but if the rains come, there is a standby uh, irrigation. With this, plus what I said in the State of the Nation address, and what has been said in the budget, there is nothing that will impede us. Because you remember in the State of the Nation address, I, I, I addressed the issue of regional integration, sort of the, the issue of the market. The NRM is a mission-led organization. We don't, we don't come into, into politics to improve our CVs. Former this, former that, former that, please. Eh? We are not here to improve our CVs. No, no, please, please, please. We started fighting from the 1960s because we had historical missions. We had aims. That's why we cannot move. We must achieve these aims, and we have achieved them, as you can see. We have achieved some of them. You heard the minister telling you that that economy he was talking about, which he presented here, was all minus our petroleum, which is about to come online. When that comes online, the story of Uganda will be a totally different one. In a short while to come, our petroleum will start coming from the ground. This will enable the government to earn an extra US dollars, two billion per year, assuming today's prices. Even if the prices remain the way they are now, when our oil come, starts coming out of the ground, the government no, no, not not, not, the, not the, the whole economy, the government alone will be having an extra $2 billion per annum. This is apart from other income streams for the country. This does not include the money to private groups and so on, but to the government. This oil money, you, this oil money will never be used for consumption. Anyone who is in charge, we shall never use this oil money to, impu to import perfumes uh, and whiskey and, and what have you. Never. It will never happen. It will only be used for infrastructure and science development. Therefore, 
strategic items like the railway and the irrigation will be funded by us directly. So this business of borrowing of this and that will, will stop for, for the infrastructure, for the railway, the power stations, and the science infrastructure. We shall use this oil money to, to do that, but n not, not to import those takatakas, no. Those ones you can the way you are doing now. People who do not bother to listen to our message keep talking of poverty, lack of jobs, etc. You had, uh, I'm very happy the minister and his staff, finance, are now finally capturing properly the message of the NRM. Been having problems with the, with them, the way they, they present things, the way they talk. Uh, sustainable development. What is that? Uh, what is what does it mean? One time I asked, what does the sustainable pregnancy mean? Does somebody's pre pregnant sustainably sustainably? never produces a baby. Nature provides that you have quantitative growth and qualitative change. Pregnancy after nine months becomes a baby. Maybe after some time it changes in something else. That's how, that's how life is. You cannot have a static situation indefinitely. So we are very clear that prosperity means an adult person participating in producing a good or a service and selling it. And when, when we say participation, he may be the owner of the product, or he may be an employee, but he will participate in producing a good or a service and selling it. And if you do that with the Chibaro, with, with the proper mathematics, you will get prosperity. That's what I've been telling you. And we've been telling you, and the minister has now repeated emphatically, I'm very happy with the finance now. I have nothing useful to add. And he has told you that the sectors where prosperity is are four. Commercial agriculture with the Chivaro, Chura, Aymar, Otita, with the mathematics. Commercial agriculture. Secondly, manufacturing and artisanship. Thirdly, services. And fourthly, ICT. So in those areas, that's where you'll get prosperity. You should choose to go to be somewhere as a wealth creator or an employee of the wealth creator. Now, those who bother people who do not bother who do not bother to listen to our messages keep talking of poverty, lack of jobs, etc. The four sectors of commercial agriculture, artisanship and manufacturing, services and ICT, if utilized in the manner recommended by the NRM ever since 1995, will create so many jobs that we, that, we, that we will exceed the job levels of Uganda. 
Uganda doesn't have enough once we develop our full capacity. Uganda will not have enough workers. And by the way, this one happened during the time of the British when they introduced a few activities here like coffee and cotton and uh, sugar. That's how Africans from Rwanda, from Burundi, from South Sudan, that's how they came here. That's more economy, money economy, or, or during the British time, created so many jobs that the internal people were not enough. That's why, that's why our, our brothers had to come from Rwanda, from Burundi, from South Sudan, to, to work here. So even now, if we all become wealth creators in the four sectors, there will be so many jobs. I've given the example of uh, Mr. Nyakana in Fort Porto, using one acre to employ 15, 15 people. And we calculated that if 7 million people did that, we would create a, more, more jobs than the whole population of Uganda now. But as of now, we already have 900,000, 922,000 people employed in manufacturing. Show those factories again if you, if you have them. <coughs> Show them on the, on the screen, the, the factories. Ah, those are now. These are all new factories. In 1986, we had, we had only eight factories. When we went to the UMA, Uganda Manufacturers Association, we now have more than 8,000 like those. These are already employing 922,000 people and something. The whole of the public service, army, police, civil service, 480,000. So the factories are now employing two times the number of people working in, the, in, in, in this uh, public service. So those uh, jobs, job, the jobs are there, but you must uh, be qualified for them by doing the right thing. All those are jobs. New jobs, you can see all of them are brand new factories. They are not all. This is the factories now, giving us 922,000 jobs. The services, the hotels, the tourism, the transport, the banks, they are now employing five million people. Five million. Ah, look at the, show that factory, that, that, the one of the factory. The one which was there now, put it back. The one which was showing, ah, those are hotel. Go back to the one you, you had shown. was a factory where workers were seated. You know, there's another one which was bigger. There was a bigger one. Anyway, they are all the same. You can see how many people. Jobs are there. Ah, look at that, look, look at that group now. Hmm? Look at that. All those are young people. Jobs, jobs, jobs. You're just talking. They don't listen. And then, then they have their wonderful papers, like the wonderful, what do you call it, monitor, that monitor group. All of you are working out.
They are like enemies of, 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 of Africa. The other day, I saw them when they tested Karuma, Karuma power, 600 megawatts. I think there was some blackout or something. So they were, they were celebrating in their paper monitor. Oh, you see, the network, the transmission network cannot handle the power. And I had had that opinion. It's very interesting to see how the enemies link up, enemies of Africa. So the, the logic of, of the monitor is like what I used to hear with the governments and some of the civil servants who are like on the side of monitor also. They, they were saying, but if we have the, the power station at Karuma, how shall we evacuate the power? If you can't evacuate it, have the factories near there. They can all be around Karuma, nearby, if you don't have to carry it far away. When Jinja, Owen Falls Dam, was, was opened by Queen Elizabeth in 1954, the, the, the electricity was only in Jinja. That's why the factory is concentrated there, the original factory. We didn't have electricity in Barara. We didn't have cover. We didn't have, but it was enough that it was in, in one part of Uganda, and all the factories congregated there. That's a step forward. If the electricity is there, if you, if you can't distribute it far away, let the people use it from nearby. That's not a problem. That's a step forward. It's not something to mourn about and. Uh, Demonize. Now, the ones employed in services, the five million, 40,000 of them are employed in ICT. Then 66,000 are employed in mining and, 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 and quarrying. Now, this is just and also, it's hard for when somebody gives you something to test. To in the Tungamo, at the trade center, if you found the women selling local beer, you could say, Mbaze Mondoze, give me. The, the, the Jaribu first, the, the, the test, let me test. He, he tests this one, so it's not good. But by the time he has, he has finished, he's drunk and he says, <laughs> he, he says all the beer is bad. At Amarogadi, Gona Nmabi. So here, what we are showing you, you, you show the hotel. You are starting to show you the hotel, the services, and the picture. Ah, all those are employing people. And here in my small speech, I, I also have those pictures there. I have those pictures. Therefore, I want to repeat what the minister said. Uganda wake up, work. The work, the wealth, the prosperity, is in the four sectors, commercial agriculture, artisanship and manufacturing, services and ICT. The capital 
to help you go into any of these sectors is already available. In UDB, PDM, Emioga, ETC. If the money which is there now is not enough, we can add more. But start. Now, the only remaining problem is corruption. As I, as I said the other day, we are going to stamp out that corruption. This, it's really amazing how people do not see. NRAM, NRA is a very, very powerful force. I don't know how anybody thinks he can play around with it. We are very soft, we use soft methods, we never force anybody, we always talk. To. I am like a, a pastor, preaching, preaching, preaching. Repent, you are going to go to heaven. <laughs> but they don't know, I don't know why they, they, they forget that we have got a lot of capacity, a lot of power, which we shall use if necessary. I really can't, I can't, I can't get it. Because these corrupt people insult our heroes. The other day, we were in Mpenja <coughs> celebrating Heroes Day. Now those heroes there in Mpenja we were told there were 250 skulls of dead people. They are there in just that village. Now, in the whole of Uganda, we lost 800,000 people killed. 800,000. In Ruero, we gathered 30,000 skulls. Oh, there were 70,000. So, this sacrifice, that's how you are here, you fellows. Excellency President, Excellency Vice President, Right Honorable this, Right Honorable that, His Lordship this, his... Oh. all those powerful people, all Honorable, I don't know what, they, they, they are all here. On the blood, on the blood of our people. You, you heard the one when in Penja they were talking about a casino, their small this and that. They sacrificed and we are here. But you come, you get a, you get a chance to, 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 to lead. Instead of helping people, now you start taking away the ritual which could help them. This is really amazing. Now, in so doing, you delegitimize yourselves. Because the, 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 you see, the Ugandans are very dangerous. When they see that you are not honest, they just leave you. But one day, they will get a chance to avenge on you. That's what happened with the, 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 the groups we had here. When we got independence, all those young people, we all young people. Mutesa was 39 years old, Obote was 35, Kakonge was 26. Years old. They were all young people. Even Jira, Necho, they were 28. They were all young people. Uganda was in their hands. Just free gift. But see what happened. The Amin, Amin was 39. He was a young, ba young man. I, I was like their, their, their small brother. I was 18. That's But you could see how, the, how those young people messed themselves up and how they ended up. 
they lost legitimacy. So when we came on, 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 on the scene, we had studied all this. And we could not afford this. Now, at that time, what we dealt with was the misbehavior of the army. Because that was one of the biggest problems at that time. The army, Nanta Gangwa Ko. They have their word, this one, each of ours, Nanta Gangwa Ko. I don't know how you translate that. How do you translate it in English? The untouchable. Uh, the army was untouchable. Ha! Ah. But the Fronasa said no. For us, we can build a disciplined army. And we started. And the army was disciplined. Then in Semuto, 1982, two of our drunk boys went to the village and killed three villagers near Semuto. One of the boys was called uh, Zabron. So they killed people in Semuto. Oh, that was really the, the boundary. Whether you NRA, NRA was survive or, 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 or or be written off by the people. So, we arrested these, these people, these boys, Zabroni. He, he was actually a good boy, but he, he, he fond of drinking. I didn't, I didn't know him well, but I had not heard anything specifically bad about him. So, we tried them. And, the case came to the high command. The other day, the right honorable speaker was calling me for a speaker, which of course I was for 10 years. But I was also a chief justice some time ago. So, in the high command, we had somebody who had studied law at Makere. The man called Jim Muez. Then he told us in the meeting that you see what killed the people in Semuto, Murule, the place is called Murule. What killed the people in Murule was not Zabron. It was the beer inside Zabron. So what do we do now? How do we separate the beer from Zabron? Because Zabron was, was a Chidomara, carrying the beer which made him kill people. So what do we do? We had to shoot those children, those young people. Shoot them in public. This is how the NRA was built. Because when we did that, the Baganda said, Bano Barinama Zima. And that was the end of all this group. UFM of Kaira, because they were talking Buganda, they were in those things. They were not, could not listen because they had seen Amazima. Bano Barinama Zima. These are the people of the truth. So, therefore, I want you people, especially with the Africans, I'm very glad CJ is now talking of the alternative justice, which is really the indigenous justice. Because this is justice of, of the Whigs and all that, when you sit there, some of it is, uh, for instance, with, with the African people, the problem of murder, 
you kill my brother, I must revenge. It's, I, I'm duty bound to revenge or call up. Because if I don't, the spirits will, will kill me of my brother. My brother's spirit, for whom I did not revenge, will, will go against me. So the only way you can escape revenge is of Karawa. You, you, you go back and, for the Africans, we have got restorative justice. It is, it is not, it is, can be punitive, retributive, but it, it is also uh, provided for restorative. To say, okay, please, don't revenge me. Let's sit down. One of our people killed, killed your brother. Let us solve this. Like, for instance, I still have a date with, with the clan of uh, the late Colonel Tengora Machodwogo. You remember he was killed by our soldier. I, I must make peace with the clan on behalf of the army. I must make peace with the clan. Otherwise, they would just keep quiet. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are powerful, you are president, excellency, what? Yes. But they will never forget. They will never forget. So, when I went there, I said we are going to do the Banyangoro call it Okarawa. So, murder, rape, rape. That is an unforgivable sin. It must be sorted out. It must be fully accountable. Other things like uh, fighting in the bar, what, what, they mix up things. There are things which are very serious. Murder, rape, corruption now. Corruption is very, 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 very dangerous. And don't involve me in your struggles with the with the, with the commissioners and so on. Those are another matter. But corruption, corruption. So these three: murder, rape must get must be fully accounted for and promptly and promptly so therefore you should be very careful with some of the, the some of these concepts some of them foreign but some of them distorted like bail you emphasize bail. Bail, bail, bail. Why do you emphasize bail? Why don't you emphasize trial so that we get the truth? That's what you should emphasize. Because when you talk of bail, you are very you are, you are playing in the hands of the enemy. The Bajanker will say, When the Bajanker will say that you are finished. He spent one night and came back. There was nothing, in other words. So you would not see your justice. You are talking justice that uh, freedom in the constitution. What, what? That's not. That, that's a foreign concept. It's not our concept. Our concept is a dog that steals pays with its back. So you must handle it quickly and, and, and decisively. Those concepts are very dangerous because they separate us from the people. There is another one. There is another one which says, I can come to court and keep quiet. Really? That, that I, I, I keep quiet. The way I call it is, He is a thief, he has nothing to say. <coughs> so I don't know how those people, even of those concepts, but please, here, we should deal with our situation. Like we dealt with the issue of, of uh, Zabroni. That's how the NRA was saved. Otherwise, it would have been finished. 
In the Uganda, people would have lost confidence in us, and it would have been very difficult to, to recover. Because there we had a chance to show who we, 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 we were, and we did it. And that's how the NRM was, was built up. So the NRM, NRM of today, please, first of all, I'm surprised that really people can dare what I hear, this one, this one, this one. But who do, do these people think they are? We are going to smash them. We have the capacity. Now that they have attracted our, because me, I, I never concentrate on those things myself. But now that we have, they don't listen, we advise, you have now attracted our attention, our full attention, you will see. We shall go for, we shall crush this, this, this treachery. This is really a betrayal, and we are going to finish it. Now, the borrowing, I'm glad the minister explained that these newspapers with their radios, they, they create panic among you people. Debt, 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 debt. We actually had a very low debt level until Corona. Our debt GDP ratio before Corona was 30 percent. Very low. But some people pushed, 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 and we found we had reached 40 percent. But I don't believe in, in borrowing. My view is that I don't believe in this borrowing. I believe in cutting our cloth according to uh, our cloth according to our cl our cloth, and that's what we should be doing. Now, finally, the talk of uh, external shocks. External shocks. Which ones now? That there was a war in in Ukraine. And, and that you are importing wheat from Ukraine and Russia, and now you are going to die. Hey, but why don't you eat mahogo? You remember I said you, why don't you eat mahogo? Why do you eat wheat in the first place? Me, I don't eat wheat. I don't eat rice. I have my foods. For the last eight years, I have my foods. The only time I ate rice was when I was in Tanzania, fighting Yamin. So the external shocks, which, which one is now? Now, the only one we have is, is petroleum. That one we are still importing from outside. Very soon we shall have our own petroleum. So therefore, let's concentrate on our, our strength and stop all this uh, diversion. With these few words, I congratulate the Minister of Finance. He has done it now very well. I have nothing useful to add. And I, 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 I thank the Speaker for presiding over the meeting and all of you for coming. Thank you very much.